Hi everyone, welcome back to satdecoded.com. So we've been talking about the basics of functions, now I want to talk about a little bit more of an advanced concept called nested functions. Nested functions are when you have two, sometimes even three or more functions together in the same question. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say the question tells you f of x equals x plus 3. And they also tell you g of x is equal to x squared. Then the question asks f of g of, let's say, 4. What does that equal? Well, here's where things get a little bit trickier. Do you see how the function g of 4 is nested inside the bigger function f of g of 4? So to evaluate this kind of nested function, first we want to just talk about the smaller inside function, g of 4. So what is g of 4? Well, using our basic skills from the previous videos, we know that the 4 by itself is the input. So let's use the master formula for the g function. g of x equals x squared. So g of 4 is just 4 squared, which equals 16. Now that we know g of 4 is equal to 16, whenever we see g of 4 again for the rest of the question, we can replace it with 16. I said this, I, uh, I mentioned this earlier in a previous video, but functions are basically just a game of replacing things. Whenever we see g of 4, we replace it with 16. Whenever we saw the x earlier in, in g of x, we replaced it with 4. It's just replacement after replacement after replacement and there's many tiers of replacements. So now that we know g of 4 is equal to 16, we can replace this whole part with 16. So let me just rewrite this so it's a little easier to see. Now we have f of 16. So the real question is, what is f of 16? Well, now that we know 16 is our new input, and we have an f, so this is relating to the master formula for f, we know f of x is x plus 3, so f of 16 is just 16 plus 3, which is 19. So therefore, f of g of 4 is the same as f of 16, which is 19. And this 19 is our final output. That is our answer. All right, let's try another example. Let's say they tell us f of x is x divided by 3. And then they tell us g of x is x squared plus 2. And now they want us to find out what g of f of 3 is. Again, we want to start with the smaller inside function. So in this case, it is the f of 3. So what does f of 3 equal? Well, f of 3 equals, according to our master formula over here, f of 3 is going to be 3 divided by 3, which equals 1. So wherever we see f of 3 now, we can replace it with 1. So g of f of 3 is really equal to g of 1. So what is g of 1? Well, according to our master formula right here, the 1 right here is our input. So we're going to input it into this x right here. So it becomes 1 squared plus 2. And 1 squared is still 1, so 1 plus 2 equals 3. And that is our final answer. Let's try one more. Let's say they tell us f of x equals uh, x plus 2 times x plus 3. And I'm, there's not even going to be a g of x this time. They're just going to use the same f of x and nest it within itself. So they might ask us, what is f of f of 4? Well, it seems weird that you can have two f's but it's really the same concept as before. Take the inner function, f of 4, that is our input right now, 
and we're going to input it into our master formula up here. So what is just single f of 4? Well, our 4 right here is our input. So let's put it in where the x's are, right here and right here. So we get 4 plus 2 times 4 plus 3, which is equal to 6 times 7, which is 42. So f of 4 is equal to 42, and our 42, that is an output. So now when we have this f of 4, we can replace it with 42. So f of f of 4 is equal to f of 42. So what is f of 42? Now 42 has become the new input. So we're going to replace the 42, and we're going to put it where the x's are. So it becomes... 42 plus 2 times 42 plus 3. So that equals 44 times 45. And whip out your calculator, whatever that equals. I don't have a calculator with me right now, but whatever that number is, that is our final answer. And that is an output as well. One of the trickiest things about nested functions is that the inputs and outputs are, they get a little confusing because sometimes the same thing will be an input and sometimes it will be an output depending on which function you're using it for. So let me explain. Let's say f of x equals x squared. And let's say g of x is equal to x plus 3. Okay. So they ask us f of g of 2. Well, this whole thing right here, g of 2, is an input. But we have to identify it's an input for what function? It's an input for the f, for f, OK? Because in a previous video, you would probably identify g of 2 as an output because that's, that's a function, and functions are outputs. But in the case of nested functions, the g of 2 is representing some value, and that value is the input for f. Okay, But within the g of 2 itself, just g of 2, the 2 portion is also an input. But it's an input for g the function of g. It is not, this 2 is not an input for f. The input for f is g of 2, that whole value. Okay, So g of 2 as an output is, it's an output for the function of g, for g. g of 2 as an input is for f. That's the difference. They're both g of 2, g of 2, but they're inputs and outputs just for different functions. Okay, So if we're going to finish evaluating this one, what is g of 2? Because that's the inside input. Well, g of 2, according to our master formula, is just 2 plus 3. So that's 5. So wherever we see g of 2 now, we can replace this whole thing with 5. So really, the question is asking, what is f of 5? So according to our formula, f of 5, it's going to be 5 squared, which is 25. Now this 5 right here is an input for x, or sorry, for, for f. And this 25 right here is an output for f. I hope that makes sense. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next video.